We're back with a fresh edition of the area's most in-depth weather forecast video, and it's almost Thanksgiving time. It's Tuesday evening, the 26th day of November. We're going to talk about all things weather when it comes to holiday travel, both before and after the holiday. Uh, there's a lot of wintry weather and wintry intrigue to talk about in our general region in the uh, coming days and even the coming weeks. Today was a good example, though, of how the record books can be kind of deceptive. We had a high of 53 yesterday. That occurred at kind of a traditional time of the day in the afternoon. Today's high was also 53, but that occurred just after midnight. We spent most of the day in the uh, 40s, so it'll go into the record books as a, uh, a day with a high temperature 8 degrees warmer than the average. But, of course, that was not really representative of the afternoon. That being said, it was still a pretty nice afternoon because the sun came out, as expected. Made for a really nice sunset, crystal clear skies at sunset this evening. This is our Boardman camera uh, looking to the uh, west, of course, back towards the Canfield area and near the uh, Southern Park Mall. Great looking sunset this evening, but the clear skies won't be here for very long, and we're not going to have very many sunny afternoons like this coming up. Now, we still have a clear sky as of 7-11 p.m., but the clouds are just off to our west, and they will thicken up in a hurry later on this evening. Now, of course, tomorrow is a big travel day right before Thanksgiving, but even the Tuesday before Thanksgiving, the, the airports are packed, the roads are busy, and nationwide, with some exceptions, the weather is cooperating. Now, the exceptions are mostly in the uh, west, where several winter storm warnings are out for the Sierra Nevada Mountains in California, the Wasatch Range in Utah, the Colorado Rockies, but all those Winter storm warnings are up in the higher elevations for the most part. Uh, for the most part, across the country, the weather is pretty uneventful this evening. So let's walk through the next couple of days, including our big travel day tomorrow and coming up on Thanksgiving. Because we have a winter storm tracking our way, but it's kind of a sorry excuse for a winter storm. Clouds will thicken on Wednesday. Could be a couple of raindrops trying to sneak in towards dinner time Wednesday evening. But the lion's share of the rain is coming later at night, and it will start to mix with some snowflakes. Now kind of an intimidating looking weather map here at daybreak on Thanksgiving morning, right? A whole bunch of blue. Got to remember though that temperatures down here at the ground, the, the road temperatures, the air temperatures will be a couple of ticks above freezing. I think we'll wake up around 34 degrees on average Thursday morning. I think a lot of this snow is going to try to melt on contact. That being said, uh, heavy snow rates can overcome marginal temperatures if they're heavy enough. I, I'm not going to be shocked if somebody's ground is whitened first thing Thursday morning, if there are some small slushy accumulations on decks and railings and car tops and that sort of thing. Most of our paved surfaces, though, should be in pretty good shape early Thursday morning. And even if there are a couple of slick spots out there at the start of the day, most people have either gotten to their destination or aren't going to their destination for Thanksgiving until maybe later in the morning into the afternoon. By that point, everything will just be damp. A couple of rain showers Thursday afternoon, and then the cold air is coming in a hurry, and the lake effect machine will start cranking up by midday and afternoon at the latest on Friday. That being said, a lot of it is going to be aimed to the north of our TV viewing area. So, snowfall expectations. Here's a look at our model spread. and You know, the, the 18Z, or the afternoon run, of the NAM model. We call, sometimes call those afternoon runs the happy hour runs because for whatever reason, sometimes they're famous for having a goofy solution. The NAM went crazy with its 18Z run, its afternoon run with a couple of inches of slushy snow. That's definitely an outlier though. The GFS 18Z afternoon run had a little less than an inch. European, the graph, um, all basically negligible amounts of accumulating snow, and I definitely lean more down in this direction rather than this crazy NAM run. So again, some small slushy accumulations to kick off Thanksgiving, definitely a possibility, but I don't think it's much to worry about. Travel forecast, now this, you know, is basically for our television viewing area across far eastern Ohio and western PA, and what I want you to take away from this is we're looking pretty good for the most part all the way through the weekend. Um, little rain, some snow, of course, tomorrow night into Thursday morning, and maybe a shower or some drizzle Thursday afternoon, maybe a couple of flurries Friday, but not looking probably at a lot of road impacts from that. And Saturday is looking okay, uneventful day with some sunshine and maybe some flurries on Sunday, but that should be about it. But you don't have to head too far to the north to find more in the way of problems. Even though we're not going to have a lot of snow issues, we are going to be dealing with the cold. These are daybreak wind chills all the way through early next week. Some pretty skinny numbers here. And you know, if this were the middle of winter, this would be kind of run-of-the-mill stuff. But in early December, you know, late, late November, early December, this is pretty significant cold that's heading our way. Now, anyone who's traveling 
especially after Thanksgiving Friday into Saturday into Sunday. East side of Cleveland, along Interstate 90, over towards Ashtabula, Mentor, um, the Erie area, especially over towards the Erie area, over towards Jamestown, New York, along 86 and 90 in western New York, southern suburbs of Buffalo. Um, that's going to be the bullseye, as it oftentimes is when you have a fetch that's kind of out of the west to almost sometimes out of the southwest. Until we get a fetch that's more northwesterly, a lot of these lake effect bands are not going to be super impactful in our TV viewing area. Could a couple of snow showers and flurries coat the ground in some spots, maybe up towards Mesopotamia, Bloomfield, um, Kinsman, and over towards northern Mercer County? Possibly. Um, but the lion's share of this will be, of course, way up there in the primary snow belts. And, and the lakes are remarkably warm. Here's a look at the water temperatures on the Great Lakes. And, you know, there's some sections of central Lake Erie that are pretty close to 60 degrees still in late November. The lake as a whole is running 8 degrees warmer than the average. The average temperature of the water on Lake Erie is still like 54 degrees. It should be about 46. And in fact, uh, this is a record for this time of the year. Here's a look at the Lake Erie water temperatures, the history of these water temperatures. And the warmest year overall on record on Lake Erie was 2016. But this line right here, this uh, orange-ish line, I'll take off my telestration there. It's this one right here. That's the current year, and that's the current date. And so Lake Erie on record, um, going back to 1995 anyway, so about 30 years worth of records here, has not been this warm on November the 25th and 26th. So, so there's lots and lots, lots and lots of, of warm water. There's a big difference between the lake water temperatures and the air temperatures that will be blowing over those lakes. So here's one model depiction of snow over the next seven days, taking us through next Tuesday evening. So exactly seven days from this recording, and they're going to be measuring it in feet, I think, in northeast, far northeast Ohio, northwest PA, southwest New York, downwind of Lake Ontario, up near Watertown, New York, and then off the other Great Lakes as well. Parts of uh, Michigan will do really well. Parts of Ontario will do really well uh, with this lake effect uh, event. And this is just through next Tuesday. I think beyond that, there'll be more lake effect snows. Accumulating snows in our TV viewing area you know, I don't think it's all that likely it, for the most part until maybe the middle of next week, just beyond this animation towards next Wednesday and the next Thursday. This is days eight and nine, so we're, we're speculating a little bit here, but there might be a pretty potent clipper that rolls through the Great Lakes uh, during that time frame, sometime during the middle of next week, and that may be our best chance for some, you know, modest accumulations in the majority of our viewing area in the next week to 10 days. Cold's going nowhere in a hurry, though. I'm becoming more and more convinced that the entire first half of December will be colder than the average. And there's actually some, you know, model suggestions that uh, it may be, you know, we may run the table in December all the way through the end of the month. It may stay cold. Now, I kind of suspect the pattern's going to try to break down at some point later in the month and become a little less cold, a little milder. But some of the modeling is pretty bullish on the cold. You know, I'll tell you, I did my winter forecast, what, three weeks ago? Uh, two and a half weeks ago, something like that. Um, and I called for a December that would probably come out in the wash as warmer than the average based on what a lot of the modeling was showing. I should have stuck with what a lot of the analogs were showing. Here's a look at our analog set that we used for the winter forecast focused on December, and you can see there's a cold signal in this analog set. Um, so I should have, you know, paid a little more attention to this and less attention to a lot of the modeling, which as recently as a week ago was not very cold for December, but we've uh, seen a, a distinct, of course, change in the expectations for December over the last week. And, you know, one of the one of the regrets I have already with the, the uh, winter forecast is that uh, I, uh, I did not pay close attention, close enough attention to those analog years for December specifically, um, because the, the signal was there for a colder than average month. We'll do an update on the entire winter forecast coming up in a couple of weeks um, before before Christmas break. We'll, we'll take a look at the winter as a whole and make any adjustments as needed to that forecast, which is only a couple of weeks old, but already the first part of winter anyway uh, is, is not going according to plan. I do suspect, though, that the rest of the winter we will probably see less in the way of intense cold uh, compared to the month of December. But, you know, we'll reevaluate re all that in a couple of weeks. Thanks for watching on this Tuesday evening. If you'll be uh, doing some traveling before Thanksgiving, stay safe, everyone. If I don't see you before Thanksgiving, have a, a great holiday. Hope you and your uh, family and friends have a great and safe holiday. I'll do Weather for Weather Geeks one more time this week on Wednesday before my time off for the Thanksgiving holiday. So, again, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your night.